for acting as a discussant on this very uh, important and timely publication. Uh, my comments uh, concern primarily issues of tax incidence and uh, the question of, of taxation and income inequality linkages. Now, uh, when thinking of Latin America and, and its income inequality, it's, it's exceptional in a number of ways. Uh, first of all, because of, its, of the extent of income inequality, and we're talking about uh, a region that has the highest income inequality rates uh, worldwide. The second defining feature, though, is, of course, uh, as you may well be aware, is the, is the declining trend in income inequality that has been experienced certainly over the past uh, 10 years. Now, this is uh, in contrast with what is happening elsewhere. So when we look at uh, certainly within country income inequality uh, by region, we see very clear or rather clear trends towards increases in, in income inequality, while Latin America has a clear and significant reduction, which is, which is very encouraging, of course, for the region. Um, another aspect that, that emerges when we consider Latin America and compare it with, with other regions uh, for which we have data um, is uh, certainly up to a certain point in time, sort of historically, is the weak uh, effect of taxes and transfers on the distribution of income. So up until recently, we were looking at uh, essentially negligible impacts on the distribution of income or indeed regressive impacts. And this is uh, partly documented uh, in the book. Um, particularly when we compare the experience of Latin America with the experience of OECD countries, uh, this is, becomes very apparent. Uh, and, and, and one of the uh, striking uh, sort of images that we, we can look at when we plot the distribution of income uh, is um, when we compare the distribution of market incomes for OECD countries with the market distribution of, of Latin American countries and find that these are actually very similar. So the Gini coefficients for market income is, in fact, or for original income is, is rather similar. Uh, the big differences occur when we take taxes and transfers mm -hmm. into account, and that's where for the OECD, we see a stark reduction, a considerable reduction in income inequality, while for Latin America, certainly up until recently, and this is, a, this is changing, um, actually the reduction has been really very low or actually regressive in some cases where we actually see a taxes and transfers reinforcing existing mm -hmm. income inequalities. Um, now, this recent reduction in income inequality is the result of a number of factors, including developments in the labor market and wages, uh, but also the expansion of social spending. This has played a very important role, and particularly the expansion of targeted spending, so spending that is uh, progressive and that is reaching lower income groups that have up until recently been largely excluded <coughs> from social spending. But what is the role of taxation? Um, the book uh, suggests that it's mixed, and we've just seen it in the current presentation. There are, there are mixed stories, mixed things happening, depending, of course, on the country that we consider, but also the type of ta tax instrument. Um, does this matter? I mean, does taxation matter for, for distributional uh, purposes or, or inequality? Um, I was very glad to see that uh, the book says yes. I mean, if we take into account the, the title of the book already uh, ma it makes reference to the fact that taxation is more than just than revenue, um, and it alludes precisely to this fact. And this is a very welcome approach to tax analysis, uh, partly because up until recently, certain in s certainly in some policy circles, taxation has been primarily discussed in terms of its revenue generating objectives, with less attention being paid to its distributional effects. And the book does a really good job uh, in terms of discussing taxes, both with respect to its revenue, to their reg revenue generating uh, purposes, but also their distributional implications. Um, now, the book helps us also understand the reasons why we continue to see these results in terms of tax incidence and tax distribution. Um, it looks at a wide range of factors that determine these outcomes, including political economy variables, ideology, um, tax administration uh, issues. It also looks at the design details that have permitted these outcomes. And again, 
the, the, the presentation has already touched upon these. I'm just going to briefly look at two sets of transfers. The book covers of taxes, sorry, the book looks at um, more taxes. But I'm in particular, I'm going to highlight the, the role of um, personal income tax and VAT. Again, partly the focus on these, these taxes uh, results from uh, the international comparison of, of the distributional effects of taxation, in particular when we look at uh, OECD, the experience of OECD countries where personal income taxes is in fact the, in many countries, certainly many European countries, the primary source of tax revenue. And it is also a uh, sometimes highly progressive mm -hmm. tax. And it can be progressive and, and have a progressive distributional impact, not only with respect to other tax instruments, but also when compared to, to, to uh, targeted transfers and, and um, progressive spending. So there's a huge scope for personal income taxation <coughs> to tackle income inequality. Uh, and the low revenues that are currently generated from personal income taxes and the structure of personal income taxes are, 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 are contributing tremendously to this weak, um, progressive, or indeed regressive uh, total effect of, um, of fiscal regimes in many Latin American countries. And the book makes the point very clearly that there's, there is a huge scope to try and improve uh, the structure um, and expand the, the tax base of personal income tax with the objective of promoting fair fiscal regimes. In particular, it identifies the reasons for the continued uh, regressivity of uh, personal income tax, including the, the high non-taxable income thresholds, the exemptions of entire categories of income, um, the dividends, interests, capital income, uh, but also the special treatments that capital gains receive and that are contributing uh, significantly to the, to the, to the regressive effects uh, or, or low progressive effects of um, personal income taxes. Uh, the second characteristic uh, of the region, of course, is the uh, important, the, re the high reliance on VAT. And here, uh, as, as the presentation has shown, it's true that the evidence is mixed. VAT is not necessarily regressive. It, 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 all, it, it tends to be regressive. Um, it isn't necessarily so. And even if we consider income as our, as our reference variable, let's say, uh, it can be progressive uh, if under certain circumstances, under certain types of tax uh, VAT design. Having said that, it tends to be regressive. Uh, mm -hmm. And this, again, the, the high reliance on this form, or this type of tax, combined with the particular design features that still prevail in the region, uh, tend to contribute to the overall uh, regressivity of, um, of the tax system. And the book provides, again, examples of how VAT could be uh, further adjusted uh, in order to improve the fairness of fiscal systems, uh, and specifically taxation. Uh, and it does so by proposing, primarily by proposing uh, options that would help correct for the regressivity of VAT, which are certainly um, very interesting, and we'll see now concretely whether they will be experimented with and implemented. So um, beyond this, I have two sort of issues that I'd like to raise. One is the question of informality, partly because when we think about the expansion of taxation and uh, of resource mobilization efforts in low-income countries elsewhere, uh, the question of informality, of course, is, is, is massive. <coughs> and uh, often discussions are driven by um, practical arguments around the practicality of relying on, say, on VAT as opposed to other taxes that could be more progressive, partly as a, as a result of the fact that, that, this, that we're facing this high, high informality. And VAT does indeed, to some extent, potentially circumvent the informality problem. Uh, now, the book has an entire chapter on informality, and it primarily focuses, though, on the potential effects, or let's say potential for alternative tax instruments to generate incentives for informality. And it looks at both the payroll tax and also VAT, which apparently, according to the book, uh, could also, uh, and in some instances, has generated incentives for informality, which is very interesting. Um, something I hope we might be able to discuss or have time to discuss later 
concerns informality itself and f government efforts towards promoting formalization as a channel to then further expand certainly the personal income tax base, uh, but other also other forms of taxes that can be more progressive. The second issue that I wanted to raise concerns an argument that is that the book uh, brings up and that is also mentioned in other publications about taxation, which asks, does tax incidence matter at all? Given that if we are presumably interested in the ultimate or, or sort of final distributional effect of fiscal policy, that is of taxes and transfers, does the incidence of a tax really matter? So if we look, say, at a tax reform that is regressive in the first instance, but allows, but permits additional revenue, and this additional revenue in term, turn holds potential in terms of of uh, more progressive social spending so that the net final effect is a more progressive distribution of resources, should we be worried about the initial sort of uh, regressive incidence of taxes? Now, uh, certainly in one section of the book, the, the answer is, well, we probably shouldn't worry too much because what matters is the final distribution of resources. And this is the, sort of the answer that I've seen in, in a number of papers that are, that are analyzing tax reform and that actually argue that if the, o the final outcome is progressive, then that's all that matters. I'm a little concerned about this uh, type of um, uh, reasoning or this argument. Uh, I think that actually the incidence of, incidence of tax is hugely important, not only in the immediate instance in terms of the immediate incidence of the tax, but also because of all the implications this has, both in terms of absolute incidence of the entire system, but also with respect to other variables that in turn determine the uh, level and combination and type of taxes that government adopts. And I'm thinking, of course, of political economy type variables and, uh, and civic type concerns. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Some really interesting issues on the agenda. I'll ask you to collect those and hold and come back. I think some points to, to pick up. Uh, Philip. Turn to you, and I think we're going to start broadening out a little bit as well into the questions of implications beyond that. Thank you.